Hi guys. Um, for a long time, I dealt with nothing but wooden planes. Reason being, I antique shop, I hit them all, and you can find a plane from ten dollars to some of them are forty and fifty bucks, depending on the condition of the threads and irons and things like that. And it was just my luck that put me on the hunt for the Stanley Forty Five. Um, a Stanley Forty Five is seven planes in one. It's, it's multiple planes. It has uh, lots of irons and blades, and uh, I, I wanted one. The problem is. To get a Stanley in a condition I want, all the washers there, all the parts there, all the blades, the manual, uh, in good condition, you're looking at 400 and up. Uh, 400 would be one that would be in not so good a condition. Mint, they, they start at six, seven, eight hundred dollars. So I was on eBay the other night and I came across um, a 45 and it had about 30 minutes to go and I had a little bit of time to do some research on it and bid on it and I did and I got it for $150 so that's what we're going to talk about now um, I'm going to show you what I've learned and what I know and what I believe um, I'm sure this may cause some issues and problems with some folks but um, I think it's true to this plane okay let's have a little discussion about it all right Okay, here's the box as received. I think the box is really cool. Uh, the gentleman that had it, he used a blasting cap box. So let's open it and see what we got. When I first opened it, I had the full manual. We're going to touch base with this in depth. This is a Montgomery Ward and Company Lakeside Combination Planes. I believe the model that they use is an 84695. And in there is 45, they just added some numbers to it. But uh, the manual is complete. <clears throat> Inside the box, I had the full set of the cut cutters, all the way from the number 10, all the way down to the nine. And the lid is complete, catches and has for there, and all the irons are in there. The smallest one, is broken but that's the only one with issues the rest of them are there these have seen some use they've been sharpened and used especially down here in the mid-range and the low range and then the second cutter box is complete the box is all there the label is intact all the beaters are there and the uh, window moldings and both the match plane irons are there. Very nice. I have the cam, and on this cam has got some numbers stamped 429. I'd like to know are there other Stanley cams with those numbers? Stanley is not embedded inside of this cam. The catch, the little brass catch, is in place and the screw is there. All the nickel plating is intact. I have both short rods. They are stock. A little bevel on the end, lining up. I have the beating stock. Um, beating stop, excuse me. And it's in good shape. I even have the little screwdriver for adjustments. The plane itself is nickel plated. Um, we have the rectangular number 45 here and we've also got the trade 45 mark there on the bottom of that fence. Fence is adjustable. I do have the front adjustment screw. All of this plane is here. Okay. I've got both stops. The knickers are in place. This gate does have a little bit of damage on it. That stop, the inner stop, it's all there. 
All right. One thing that some people were doing, and I've noticed back here on the slitter, they were putting their slitter against this back stop because of the length of the thread of the screw. Mine had a washer. You don't have to run the slitter in there with that washer in place, and that is a nickel-plated washer, and it is there. Um, the handles are solid. I do believe they're rosewood. The fence is in a little bit of frontal damage from being beat and banged, but it's there. And there's the plank for what it is, Montgomery Ward. Montgomery Ward started out as a catalog ordering company. Um, you could order anything, Bailey, Stanley, whatever you needed. Sears came along and gave them heavy competition, especially in the early 1900s, 1910s, and 20s and 30s, and, over, and overtook them, really. Montgomery Ward had a couple of brands that they ran. The Lakeside brand would be what Craftsman is to Sears. And from what I'm understanding and reading, uh, they subbed all their tools out to other companies to have them made. Uh, there is some belief that, uh, say, if they use, they use Sargent and Stanley for their planes, and some of the stuff that they got may be subpar or not the same quality as the stock. Um, I believe this particular plane is the Stanley 45. It's just been modified, and we're going to touch that a little bit. But uh, I really do believe, and I've got some proof for that too. And what I've got here is a copy of Stanley's manual, and I want to show you something. Here's the Lakeside Plane manual from Montgomery and Ward. And if you notice, the images are identical. Stanley says, Stanley 45, Montgomery changed it with seven planes in one. But the text afterwards, this well-known and useful tool, really, this well-known and useful tool, and it's this. To the T. On the cam itself, here, inside the cam is stamped Stanley. Now, if we take the lake side manual, I'm going to open it to the rear, to the parts, and I don't know if it was intentional or if they left that off, but right there. Part number 80, they left Stanley stamped on the cam. On the parts diagram. And if I know anything about patents and infringements and copyrights and trademarks, Stanley would not allow that unless it was their product. Stanley used a British standard called the Whitworth. Admiralty fine series standard. Um, that's why only Stanley threads fit Stanley planes, and you've got to get Stanley parts to go back into them. None of the modern stuff, metric or SAE or anything now, will go into them. I've had to have a couple made by machinists, and uh, some of the weird ones are really hard to find. Um, what I have here is a Stanley number four. Montgomery. 
and apply the Stanley. Finger tightening. Alright, the tote. Here's a Stanley 71. I'm going to take the thumb screw out of the back and take the thumb screw out of the front skate. Tensioning screw here. this one. Note that it fits perfectly easily with no problem. That tells me it's Stanley threaded. Okay. Okay. Stanley on their 45 had their name molded in there. And there's texture here, and you see how it gets shiny around the outside. I don't know if I'll be able to get it close enough for you guys to see. But from this point all the way to this point, it's shiny. You can see the grinder marks, and then it was nickel plated over the grinder marks. So they removed Stanley from this part. Well guys, that's my opinion. And I did a little investigation and I found some things that I think lean it towards it is a Stanley. I think I did good for the amount of money I got tied up into it. It's in great shape. Um, I want to learn this plane. It's a bit of a Frankenstein. Uh, it has some quirks to it. Got good points and bad points. Guys don't like it because the mouth is so open. Uh, you know, tear out things like that. Um, just keep it sharp. And take light cuts, and you can work with it. I think it'll fill in the gaps of some of the other planes that I don't have, and it'll help me get along with future projects. And now I might be able to put a little bead on the drawers on my chest of drawers I'm building for my granddaughter. But uh, I'm going to clean it up really nice. I'm going to learn it. And just wanted to share a little bit with you. One thing you see, the Montgomery's go for less because they don't have the Stanley stamped on them. I am not a collector, I'm a user. And I think I got Stanley quality, if it's not a true Stanley, but I believe it is. Just my opinion. And uh, let me know what you think. Alright? Thank you. Mm -hmm.